Hey friends, Shay here. So today I am here with a very highly requested video. This is going to be my second installment in my Kindle Unlimited manga recommendations. So I have done a video in the past. I did double check. Most of them are still available on KU. So I will leave that video linked in the corner for you. So definitely check that out. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I've got quite a few recommendations for you. So let's go. So first up we have Atsumori Kun's Bride to Be. This one is just a very cute shoujo school-based manga. It's one that I really enjoy. I'm not going to give too many details about any of these because I have so many, but I really think this one's pretty underrated in the community. Um, the art style is fantastic. I really like our characters and I definitely need to get back to this one. It's been a minute since I've read any and I really, really enjoyed this one. It definitely has that like almost arranged marriage kind of feel to it and I'm I'm really digging it. Next we have Divine Kurosaki-kun. Um, this series is definitely a shoujo hard-hitting favorite. Um, I believe the first nine or ten volumes of this one are on KU and I really enjoy the series. I It definitely has that antagonistic, not necessarily friendly to lovers kind of situation going. He is definitely a grump. She is the sunshine to his grump. There is a blonde guy thrown in the mix, so it definitely has that love triangle kind of mess. It's a really fun series. Would definitely recommend it. If you have not tried it, definitely give it a try. The next one I have here is Kirakun Today. I am going to put out a trigger warning for uh, um, serious illnesses and um, suicide ideation on this one. It is more of a heavy hitter than the other two I've talked about. In this one, we have a young man who thinks he's going to die within a year and doesn't want to seek treatment and is just trying to live his life to the fullest. And then he meets our heroine and our heroine kind of smacks some sense into him and things move forward from there as they get to know each other in a dating situation. And I really enjoyed this. This is a nine volume series. Last I knew the first seven were on KU because I ended up purchasing the last two because I really wanted to finish it out. So just know that that is an option for you. Next on the list here, I have Midday Moon. Midday Moon is a one volume boys love series. This was one of our picks for um, Thirsty Thursday. So I will leave the live show linked in the corner, but this is definitely historical. We have um, a childhood friend situation, but they didn't realize they were childhood friends. It's fantastic. I love it so very much. The next one on my list is Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight. I love this series so much. It is a 12 volume shoujo series in which we have, it's a little bit of an age gap. She's 16 at the start of the story and he's in his early 20s. So it's not a big age gap, but he is an adult and she is still in high school. So essentially she keeps dreaming of finding her fairy tale prince and wanting that kind of a romance. So when this actor starts to show an interest in her because she has a great butt, she's not sure she's going to get the fairy tale that she thought she always wanted but they do enter a dating relationship and it's all about their adventures with him being famous and her being in high school and the things that they have to feel because of that. So I adore the series. I think it's really fun. His like pervy side does calm down as the series goes on, but it's very bold and big in the beginning. So just know that going in. Otherwise, it's fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Next up, we have My Boss's Kitten. Now, this one isn't going to be everybody's favorite. This one is a boss and subordinate kind of situation at work. But outside of work, she also is in a submissive role with him, especially in the beginning. Essentially, her engagement falls apart. She goes back to the place that she's supposed to be living with this guy and finds out that her superior at work has now bought the house. But he allows her to continue to live there if she is his slave. Um, so the dynamic isn't going to be a happy thing for everybody on this one. It's a seven volume series. I did end up enjoying it. The dynamic does level out pretty quickly, um, but there is that initial power dynamic. So I just have to put that out there and let you know it's there. But again, a seven volume series, I really enjoyed it. Next, I have House of the Sun. This is another age gap romance, but they are living together. And it's been a while since I've read it, but it, the art was really fantastic. And I really liked the dynamic between the hero and the heroine. I need to get back to this one. 
Next, I have Deep Scar. This is a title by Tokyo Top Pop. Most of them have been from um, Cody Ed shows so far. But in Deep Scar, we have a girl who acts like the perfect girl and she has gaps in her memory. But when a particular young man comes into her sphere, um, he's very antagonistic towards her. But she feels this kinship with him. And there are reasons for that. I will not say what they are now. But this is a very interesting dynamic. She is very much manipulated. So I'm going to put a trigger warning out there for gaslighting. Because there is gaslighting going on within the series. So, yeah. It's really interesting. It's definitely on the darker side of things. So if you like dark things, try Deep Scar. Next, we have Noragami Stray God. This is a really fun shonen series in which you're following a god who is kind of just falling apart and the people that he interacts with. Um, this is a long ongoing series and I'm not sure how many volumes are on KU. I forgot to check, but this is one that I really enjoyed. Um, the manga is great. The anime is really fun as well. So you can enjoy it in either format, but yes, really enjoyable series. Next, I have Kiss Him, Not Me. Um, this is not necessarily the kindest to bigger bodies, um, in the beginning at least, but essentially this girl, um, her anime hero, um, is killed off in her favorite series, and so she misses school for a week. She doesn't eat or anything, and she comes back to school beautiful because she's magically lost all this weight because she was depressed. <laughs> and all these boys start chasing her because of it, but she doesn't necessarily want any of them for herself. She just wants to watch them kiss each other because she has a thing for watching male-male relationships. So this one is kind of a hot mess, but the fun version of a hot mess. Um, do know that body stereotypes are not the kindest in this particular manga, so as long as you know that going in, you can tread lightly. Um, I do like how this one ends up, though, at the end, so do know that. Next, we have A Sign of Affection. No one is surprised that this is on my list. This is a series in which we have a heroine who is hearing impaired and a hero who loves all sorts of different kinds of languages and to travel around the world. They are both in their college ages and they start to form a friendship developing into more of a relationship and he starts to learn signs so he can better communicate with her and it's amazing. I love it. The art is perfect, and he has this great, like, hand tattoo, so it almost draws more attention to the sign as it happens in the series, and it's just amazing. One of my all-time favorites. Definitely read it. Next, I have Love Massage. This is just a fun, smutty time. Essentially, this woman is very stressed. She orders an in-home massage. It becomes an erotic massage. She starts to date her masseuse, and things go from there. It's fantastic. It's a lot of fun. I don't have too much to say about this one, but it's just a fun time. Definitely enjoy it. Next, I have Fairy Tale. Um, this is a classic shonen series. Um, I do think it's worth reading. I do think Eden Zero is a little bit stronger of a series, a little bit darker. Um, but Fairy Tale is still a lot of fun. Initially, we're following Lucy and Natsu and their interactions with the fairy tale manga, like magic guild kind of situation and all of their friends. Um, the power of friendship really is a big deal in this series. It's very fun. Again, classic, um, usually an entry point anime for a lot of people. So it's very fun. Next, I am going to put on my list my boy in blue. This is not everybody's favorite. Essentially, this girl has a crush on this officer the officer takes her feelings very seriously he's like because i am a man of the law the only way we can do this is if we're legally married and so they enter into a marriage um signed off on by her parents and things go from there um i do enjoy their dynamic as a couple and how they navigate his job and them being married and all those kinds of things so it's it's a different one like i really like my boyfriend in orange as well my Boy in Blue takes a different take on, on a similar thing. So again, you're dealing with an adult and a high schooler age gap. I know that's not for everybody, but I really enjoy it. The last one I have on this list is I'm in Love and It's the End of the World. I've only read the first volume of this series, but it is adorable. I really cannot wait to get back to it. And I would definitely recommend y'all check it out because it is just really, really a sweet 
high school shoujo series. So with that said, those are 15 Kindle Unlimited recommendations for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, check the cards because my previous video has some more recs. So you've got a lot of KU recs from me now, easy to access. If you're here just because you love me, leave me your favorite heart emoji and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Just a dream, just all in my head